Narks HTLM on uh, IG. And then I'm Narks say they love me, y'all. Let me give you this. Let me give you this video while I'm thinking about it. All right. I think I, I don't think I've ever covered the trauma bond. I don't think I've ever covered the trauma bond. I need to cover it real quick. And, 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 and make sure that we have an understanding as to where the bonding part comes in. Because we know where the trauma comes in, the push and pull. But a lot of people don't cover where the actual bonding comes in. And that's what I'm here to do. I'm here to snitch. I'm your number one snitch for narcs. I'm your number one snitch for toxicity. Yeah, I'm your number one snitch for dysfunction. I'm a narcotist, a narcologist. I can't stress this enough, all right? Like, subscribe, comment, and share if you find this content helpful. All right? Please share. This is the only way I can grow my channel. This is the only way that we can get the awareness out of here. And I encourage you, you know, if you had a boss to speak up and the boss actually start dropping videos, do so. If nobody stopping you, do so. I'm motivating you. All I'm doing is bringing some fuel and, and, and lighting it under your ass or your anus so that you can use that fuel to live a good, you know, life, a good, healthy life. All right. So this is where the trauma bond, this is what the trauma bond is. And I told you guys in the love bomb phase with the narcissist, they put down a big down payment. Just like you would if you were to buy a car. You have to put down a big down payment. And this takes a lot of energy out of a narc. Yeah, this big down payment, this is a lot of energy. That's why they get so bombed out so early. After they feel like they have love bombed you enough, they have put down, put they've showered you with everything that you wanted to see, everything that you you're interested in. Uh, yeah, they show you all of that, and they and they mirror you, and they show you everything, and they make you feel like you found your soulmate. They get burned out. They get burned out, and they know they cannot reciprocate what you have going on. So they have to start to devalue you. Yeah, they can't reciprocate that. They can't do what you're doing. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, they can't do what you're doing to maintain the relationship, to keep everything on the up and up. They can't do that. So now it's on you. It's on you to put your down payment down. And no matter how much of a down payment you put down, they're going to automatically belittle it they're gonna make it seem like it's not anything but you're supposed to do that you're in a relationship you're supposed to do that all right but their thing the down payment with them okay the reciprocation with them <clears throat> the reciprocation with them uh the down payment uh the love bomb is temporary and with you if you're a healthy individual you're thinking that hey i need to do this stuff around the clock I need to do this stuff all the time. See, you're thinking more of a, on, a, on a permanent basis, while theirs is more temporary. Because you, my friend, if you're like me, you have energy to go everywhere and do whatever you want to do. Because you don't seek validation from others. Okay, so after they put this big down payment down, the only thing that's left to pay, just like a car when it's leaving a lot, are bits and pieces bits and pieces bits and pieces and to keep you working harder i have to belittle everything that you do everything even if you do the most i have to belittle it i have to make it seem like it's next to nothing and you're supposed to do that you're supposed to do that you're supposed to center your way your day around me you're supposed to center everything around me. You're supposed to be there to compliment me. You're supposed to be there to make me feel better about myself. That's what you're supposed to do. Now, I can't do that for you because I gave you so much and now I'm burnt out. That's how an argument is. Now I'm burnt out. So I'm looking for you to make up. Yeah, make up for me. Yeah, make everything up on my behalf. Make this relationship, make this car go. Like, drive this car off the lot and keep it from month to month to month to month. That's on you. I've done everything that I can. Okay, with well, a narc is temporary. With you, they're expecting everything to be permanent. And really, in a healthy relationship, 
when both people are reciprocating everything is supposed to be permanent but we are dealing with what dysfunction dysfunction so here's the trauma bond i give you a lot as a narc i give you a lot and after that, I put bits and pieces. I give you bits and pieces. Just like a car. Just like a car. Yeah, after I drive it off the lot, I pay a little bit every single month. A little bit every single month. Just so I can keep the car. Yeah, just so I can keep it. Yeah, and everything else is on you. Yeah, everything else is on you. Now, where does the bun come in? Okay, this is where the bun comes in. When you're first getting to know them, and they tell you everything. Well, first of all, they don't tell you much. If you're looking for a narcissist to drive the conversation, if you want a narcissist to keep everything going, you're not going to get much of a conversation. Okay, it's going to be dry. It's going to be one of those conversations to where you're asking the questions and they pretty much answer. And then you try to talk more and more and more to make them feel like, okay, it's comfortable for you to share. It's comfortable. You know, I'm making it okay for you to share because I'm sharing so much with you. So why not, why, why won't you share? But remember, their love is conditional. Okay, it's not unconditional like you, yours and mine. Okay, I'm speaking to empaths. I know that narcs look at these videos too. I'm speaking to empaths. Okay, it's unconditional. All right, so you're expecting the same thing in return. You're expecting reciprocation. Now, this is where the bun comes in. I give you an example. I'm a narc, and I say, "Oh, my mother neglected me. She used to dump me off on my grandmother, or she would dump me off on such and such, and just go do whatever she wanted to do." Yeah, yeah, she would just go do whatever she wanted to do. And she would only talk good about me and talk highly, like praise me, if it made her feel good or made her look good. Okay, image with them is everything. If it makes her look good, makes her feel good, she's going to talk about that. Other than that, my, my feelings and things, the things that I want to do, those things don't matter. Yeah, those things don't matter to her. And then you, as an empath, you're saying, okay, well, uh, or another narc. It doesn't matter, empath or another narc. It doesn't matter. Uh, my mom uh, chose her boyfriend over me and kicked me out of the house when I was 18. So now we have deep-seated mother issues. And to... You, as an empath, this may not be something that you share, something that you felt comfortable with voicing. So now me and this narc, we are connecting or bonded as far as the mother goes, our mothers go. Okay? So not only are you dealing with a push and a pull, we connect on a deeper level. Yeah, we connect on a deeper level. You fear uh, abandonment. I feel, I fear rejection. Another word for abandonment, you might as well say, is rejection. Yeah, you people can feel rejected after being kicked over to the side, like they don't even matter. All right, so now we can relate. There's the bond. There's the bond to connect us now as an empath i'm putting all my trust into this narc and as the narc they're putting something because we know that they use our vulnerabilities they use our weaknesses in order to sink that hook in there all right that's how they get us that's how they get us so now that we're bonded, you're feeling as an empath, I can trust you. And as a narc, that narc is feeling, I can trust, they're saying, I can trust you. Now they're feeling something different. But they're saying, I can trust you. But as the empath, that sounds good. Because we have just bonded off of these deep seated motherly issues that we both have. 
You guys see, there are many types of trauma bonds. Okay, betrayal, rejection, abandonment. There's many kinds of them. Look them up. Look them up. But with a narc, remember that everything is conditional because you're only there to act as a slave or a servant. All right? A narc say they love me. I hope that makes sense to you. Leave it in the comment. If it does not make sense, put it in the comment. Put it in the comments so that I can further clarify if need be. All right. Again, I'm Narc Saint. They love me. I hope you're taking care of yourself. I'll leave you with peace, love, light, and power. All right. I'll leave you with peace, love, light, and power. And remember that trauma comes in when they give you a lot. And then the lot is the down payment. And then after that, it's just bits and pieces. And now you're stuck trying to figure out well where did this person where is this person that i first met this person that was so willingly open to listen to me to understand me to know where i'm coming from they didn't understand you from the jump they only said that they've been through what you've been through that's all they didn't say that they understood you yeah, understood is different from somebody just talking about themselves saying oh i went through that too this is how this happened to me. That doesn't mean they understand you. One thing that somebody will say, I understand how you feel. I understand how you could feel like that. This is how. All right. You see where the bud comes in? All right. You take care of yourself. Peace, love, light, and I'll leave you with power. Power. Love you. Peace.